1998 on television, ESPN Radio, and the World Wide Web, this is the Pro Wrestling Report with your hosts, the man they call Meathead, Frank Cosentino, and Damian Nelson. Professional wrestling news, opinion, and information from fans for fans. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the Pro Wrestling Report Prime Time. Damian Nelson sitting alongside the man they call Meathead, and then along the other side of David Octavius Hero. Gentlemen, welcome to Prime Time. What a week. We got a lot to talk about. Hell in a Cell is this Sunday on pay per view. We're going to go in depth on Christian. Christian! Submitted, submitted by a Twitter user for this week's show, and a couple of new segments, actually that uh, will entertain you none the least. First, though, gentlemen, let's talk about the pay-per-view this Sunday from World Wrestling Entertainment, the latest offering, WWE Hell in a Cell. Really? It was no mercy. No mercy. As Frank would say. You know, he's uh, Italian. He is Italian. I Just tell you, he's Italian. Uh, let's go over the matches. We talked about it on this week's ESPN radio show more in-depthly as more time was available. But let's review the matches that are announced thus far for WWE Hell in a Cell. Uh, firstly, for the United States Championship, it's going to be a three-way dance. Is that correct? Yeah. Uh, Kofi Kingston or is it versus... A triple threat? Can we start calling you the professor? No, a triple threat. No. There's... <laughs> there's, there's different definitions for there's different definitions for triple threat and three way dance. Three way dance is supposed to be elimination style. Kofi Kingston supposed versus the be. Miz versus Jack. Swagger. Kofi the champion now the man as well in possession of the United States Championship. Who do you think will well, succeed in that matchup? I wonder what the WWE thinks of this match. Because when you have King and Cole in the middle of the ring running down the pay-per-view card and they don't mention it at all. I don't know. They were talking about Monday Night Football. Uh, when they don't mention it at all, even though they just announced that the match was going to happen in, you know, how many segments ago? And then don't mention it during their rundown? It wasn't in their bowl. You know, they're fed. Oh, I know they're fed. They're fed by Vincent Kennedy McMahon. D-O-H. You're a winner. No, no, I didn't even I'm give like, a winner yet. You didn't, but, I mean, tick tock. Your winner, you your winner and new show. United new? States champion. New! Your winner and new United States champion, Jack Swagger. Uh, I'm a big Jack Swagger fan, but I'm going with Kofi. You oh, think he, he who will never go anywhere. I didn't say he's going anywhere. He's going to win. He's going <laughs> to win the, the paper. And game. keep the prestigious United States title held by the likes of The Rock, Stone Cold Steve Austin, Dusty Rhodes, Ric Flair. The Rock was the U.S. champion? Sure. Yes. No. No, he wasn't. Just go. They won't know. All right. Yeah, Rock, U.S. champion. Uh, next matchup is for the Intercontinental Championship. A one-month delay on this matchup. Dolph Ziggler versus John Morrison for the IC strap. This one should be a doozy. Dave Hero. John Morrison. You know, Ziggler lost a, a touch of his steam by sitting on that couch and doing Mr. nothing Ziggles? on Tuesday. He got buried. Oh, well, he got buried big time. He got buried by Tony <laughs> Atlas. He got buried by Tony Atlas. <laughs> <laughs> Your winner is still champion, Jomo. How much longer are we going to have to endure a wash? You know what, though? I will say this. The John Morrison segment was actually fairly decent. And Tony Atlas is carrying it right now. That's going to get old quick. I sure. Like I said, so did what? Yeah, and so did woo! Because that doesn't happen in arenas before shows. But who laughs like Tony Atlas at the shows? <laughs> I don't hear any, like, section, you know, laughing <laughs> like Tony. Alicia Fox gets a champ chance at the Divas Championship, currently held by Mickey James, who's reinflated. The future of Diva Wrestling and new ladies champion, Alicia Fox. I have to... It's, Question your scruples, Mr. Hero. Are we, is this for business, or do you really think that she's... I really do. I think... Because, I mean, we know where you're at. I mean, here's the thing. With okay. Alicia Fox, she she bumps great in the ring. She's come a long really? way. Oh, yeah. If you really watch her matches... I do. You see the way she I bumps. Do. No, she, her matches. She almost bumps like Kurt Henning. Wait, you said... What? That is... Ugh. The comments underneath this video right you now. Alicia Fox bumping like Kurt Henning. She folks. is a she Dave sells. Hero. She bumps when she bumps. It does. You know she doesn't. You know if she gets punched or hit. She doesn't just fall straight to her back. She falls down like no, she really got hit. He's worked before. I'm the only one who's never been in a match. 
I'm telling you right now, if you really take the time, I do watch the match. I don't watch her, her match. mattress. I watch her matches. She actually is a very good worker. Unified tag team title will be on the line. By the line. way, Mickey James is winning that match. Thanks for asking. Jarrah Show, which was set on Raw this past Monday night, by the way, versus Batista and Rey Mysterio. How do you explain Rey Mysterio back? Well, you got to get him back on TV to start selling some more masks. <sighs> Batista's buddy. How? How, though? They've how been, do you explain it? They've been friends it? forever. I'm wondering, how do you something. explain him already back? Because he's oh, Batista's buddy. Days. And how you know what, though? How short is 30 days in this business, though? It's almost like Ray wasn't gone. Uh, he missed a pay-per-view. Yeah. When it's all said and done, and a lot of people miss Breaking Point. You remember when Eddie died? Batista and Ray, tag team champions, battled. Was that more than three years ago? It's beyond the statute of limitations. Put it this way. Jericho, Jericho is going to win. Because you don't reward a guy. Let me ask you this. And again, this is WWE. Well, that has nothing. There's no reward in taking the tag team belts because they mean nothing, honestly. Well, no, but you're not going to put a guy over that just finished a 30 day suspension. Ray Mysterio is going to be over on his own. He's going to get gonna buried. Put him over to win after a 30 day suspension. We need to go look at the, the first of three Hell in a Cell matches. D Generation X versus Legacy. Good build on this past Monday's Raw to that matchup, gentlemen. Really? I thought so. I mean, DX being funny in a. Well, not sure about Legacy being the stronger of the two teams in that particular segment. I did like Shawn Michaels yelling boring. But do you ever want to encourage fans to do that? No, of course not. No, not really. Because but when you, you know if you're Triple H or Shawn Michaels, it's never going to happen in your match. What do you care? Because they're not company guys. They're Shawn Michaels and Triple H guys. DX over easy. I'm not ordering <laughs> breakfast, all right? I'm just saying it over easy. Well, you're part of Sunday brunch, DX. How is the house? I've seen the table. You know what? It's very nice. Uh, the world, I'm sorry, WWE title will be on the line in the cell. John Cena's very first Hell in a Cell match, in case you hadn't heard, versus the Viper, Randy Orton, who already got FU'd on top of the cell, so why do we need to see the match? And honestly, Randy Orton looked like a punk on Monday night. He looked like a punk. Why? Super Cena. No, he looked like a pump because he ran scared to the top of the cage. What was the point? Oh, no. He was up on the FU or the edge of the adjuster. Why did he, he go had up? to get away. Because it was convenient. <laughs> <laughs> he was already outside the cage, and he could have ran you up the ramp. You ever a building up, not out? Uh, maybe that, that's... <laughs> Levels. <laughs> that right there is Seinfeld. Randy I did that. Sorton, Randy Orton. Randy Orton, Orton too. He's going to win because of that. Well, because who, who went won over the on last Monday? match? Who won a breaking point? Uh, Cena. Cena won match before. So and remember, Cena was strong Orton the won. Monday before the pay per view. So, <sighs> you know, I, I'm intrigued by this match. Uh, really? It's a coin flip. Really? Yeah, either either could win. But do you care? Mm. Of course you do. You care? Yeah, because because they got to find now someone else to work those guys. No, 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 I'm asking you, the wrestling fan. Yeah, because I'm curious to see what happens afterwards. The World Heavyweight Championship will be on the line. CM Punk versus The Undertaker. I'm still not sure why we should care about this match, but it is seemingly on top of the card at Hell in a Cell. Meet out your thoughts. Undertaker, he's supposed to win this match, but there's got to be a way that Punk comes out again. There has to be a way. Just like we were saying for Breaking Point, Undertaker should win this. He's never tapped out. We all Paul said. Paul Bear's going to show up with the iron. Oh, yes! We all said that there's a way. We don't know how, but Punk's coming out of it. We've said that. Punk's You've said it. I haven't said that. Okay, Punk's coming out of this one, too. Punk wins. Dave Harrell, your thoughts? Punk gets out of it with the belt. I never said win. I gotta say Taker. Taker walks out the new World Heavyweight Gym. Yes. That's WWE Hell in a Cell this Sunday on Pay-Per-View. And right after Hell in a Cell, Tuesday night. Tuesday, 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 8 p.m. to 10 p.m. The Pro Wrestling Report will be on 540 ESPN Radio. Special Tuesday. day, special time. Tuesday, PWR Tuesday Live, 8 p.m. to 10 p.m. Central Standard Time. Streaming live, pwrshow.com. Coming off the heels of this past week, Matt Morgan and a uh, special uh, other guest, uh, one half of what many say is the greatest tag team of all time, Smash Demolition. You never know what's in store for you. Pro Wrestling Report. On October 18th, TNA Wrestling presents its biggest event ever. Bound for Glory on DirecTV Pay-Per-View. Before the opening bell, check out TNA Before the Glory on the 101 Network. When I see that intensity, it's going to fuel me. 
I just fed Kurt Angle, but I'm also going to hand him his ass. I'm going to kill him. TNA presents Before the Glory, premiering October 7th at 11 Eastern on the 101 Network, only on DirecTV. Another new segment now, gentlemen, versus. It's fantasy matches, and guess what? You pick the participants. You didn't this week because it's the debut, but you will for next week. And you can submit those to us at pwrshow.com. Use the Contact Us links. Send us an electronic mail message. No stamps required as to who you would like to see in our fantasy matchup. So the way it works, boys, is this. Two names, two people, past and present, similar in nature, or maybe not. Who would win? Not go over, not be strong, but who would win? And how would the match be? A clean, and the a clean two, winner? Clean finish. No run-ins, no screw jobs. Clean Submission finish. or pinfall? Or kind of. We'll do that. No, you gotta Either way. The most important thing is the nature of the match. I know you're still relatively new to the program, but uh, the rules change as we go along. So Okay. All right. New so rules. what does independence do? Independent. Uh, <laughs> and this week, it's two big men. Really, when you look at it, though, come from similar type creations. The first of which is the great Kali, 7 foot 1, 420 pounds from uh, India. Smackdown superstar. We've got the Kali vice group also going against a Buddhist god. Going up against the claw of Giant Gonzalez. Who remembers him? Giant Gonzalez who probably had his biggest match at WrestleMania 9 up against the Undertaker, 7 foot We're in the 6. Body suit, right? 7 foot 6, 463 pounds from Argentina. Great can I call Kali. Him El you can also call him El okay. Higante. Great Kali on one side of the ring. And uh, El Higante slash Giant Gonzalez on the other side of the ring. Harvey Wimpleman is in his corner. Meathead, that fantasy matchup you're talking And then obviously uh, uh, Funyun Singh is in Kali's corner. It's Rajan Singh. Funyun Singh, his brother. With the longest sideburns in the history of the business. Kali wins it. Okay. Uh, granted, Kali is the underdog, the small guy in the match, which doesn't make any sense for anybody that's ever seen Kali. But Kali's bigger but smaller. But Correct. Good. Wider. Yeah. Uh, Kali is a little bit smaller in height, bigger in. I wish I was a little bit taller. I wish I was a baller. Yeah. Kali See, I can be, you know. Skilo? Funny. <laughs> Kali wins due to the big, what is he calling it, the chop? It's the Kali, uh, well, he Where's uses the, the chop or the vice grip. Where's the match held? Who else used the grip? Was it Baron Von Roschke? No, oh, he had the claw. claw. Somebody else used the grip. Was it one of the Von Erichs, Kerry? Somebody else used the vice grip. I think it was Kerry Where's Von the match Eric? held? Uh, we're not getting into all that. It's just the, the two stars against Kerry Von Erich also had the claw. He did have the claw. Who else had the grip? I don't know. But I, I think Kali wins in about a two-and-a-half-minute match. The match, Dave, the great Kali versus Giant Gonzalez in this week's versus. Or El Gigante, they're both former world champions. Correct. <laughs> El Gigante defeating Ric Flair. Yeah. That's my That's my winner. So as much as I love out. the great Kali, El Gigante beat the man. What would our senior intern Cal have to say about that? Cal would be crushed. You know, you know what I didn't know about the great Kali? And, and well, Cali. Before we get into that... Um, neither men had mobility. <laughs> Are you saying you never know that? This match would be painful. That's why it's two and a half minutes. Uh, so there'd have to be some kind of gimmick or something. Than Andre and Stud. Stud could move. Stud could move better than these two. Yeah, you know what? Stud did move a little bit. Even Hogan moved compared to obviously Andre. All right, but you're not going to see drop kicks. You're not going to see hip tosses. You know, you're going to see punch, punch, kick, kick. And a lot of grunting. El Gigante. Winner. Great Kali winner. You know what I didn't know about Kali? It's this is where you a little pick. Bit of research for this particular segment. Uh, he was involved in a death in the ring. Out in California, back when he was uh, learning to wrestle. Org, Arg, I forget the other person's name, but there was a, there was a concussion. Room. It was a concussion that he received uh, while in the ring with Kali, and uh, he actually died as a result of that. Did not know that until... Doing a little bit of research for this. Uh, you know what? I, I, Kali, I think, is, is the more dominant force in this particular scenario. Versus brand new segment, you can email us your fantasy matchups. I don't think it's any of our fantasy to see the great Kali versus El Gigante. Well, El Gigante is in a wheelchair. I thought he had passed. No? Are you familiar with Roy D. Mercer? Roy Mercer? This comedy is on a radio station down in Oklahoma. Not the fighter? No. 
So you can submit us your ideas for verses. That's what the D is for, the separate from the fighter. We will uh, read those and talk about them here on air. Let's go to a couple of news items here in this week's news desk. Firstly, in an effort to compete with the NFL in fourth quarter ratings, it's going to be a couple more three-hour epi- uh, long editions of Raw coming up. Uh, one will be on November 23rd, and the other will be on December 14th. Three-hour Raw. You know, with DVR, does it make a difference anymore? How long it is? Well, they are counting DVR numbers in some ratings reports now. I mean, you can you can tell that they're trying to go against the NFL by bringing in Ben Roethlisberger. And his O-line. Yeah. Is that like his O-face? O, O, O. Oh, yeah, you know it. It is funny in the movie, too. <laughs> uh, um, I think Dave's <laughs> about to tell you he's never seen Office Space. No, no, we, That's why we open up the door and just tell him to get out. I've never seen Office Space. I've told you that. Pay attention to the product. Trade industry publication Variety Magazine is reporting some bad news for my network TV. It's officially been downgraded and is no longer considered a network, meaning that uh, their ratings are only going to be reported on a weekly basis. The reason for this is they have one bit of original programming, and that is WWE SmackDown. And now they're going against Smallville, so that's just going to kill more of the ratings. Paul London. How does that make you feel if you're a network going, yeah, we're demoting you down to uh, just, uh, you know. We're going to need you to go ahead and not be a network anymore. You only got one program. What happened to cops? What happened to the academy? Not what new, not new, not new. Uh, missed the academy. Paul that's London. Original. Paul London. <laughs> Talking Mork from Mork all of a sudden? Paul London, you, Gene, and Nick Dinsmore. Uh, Which is backwards to people that just watch you do that. Ring announcer Todd Kennelly and referee Anthony Rosas joined the likes of Ken Anderson on the Hulkamania tour in Australia. If you don't remember, Rosas and Kennelly worked for Celebrity Championship Wrestling, that show that was on country music television. King V, Viscera is officially no longer on the tour. He is now in a movie, and The Godfather must have some issues to deal with at the strip club in Vegas. Hoes be running wild! I'm sure that's... She better have his money. Well, you know... Put the baby powder on your hand. You have to get your visa and passports together if you want to wrestle outside the country. Takes a while nowadays, unless you know some people. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Shane Douglas on the November to Remember event had this to say, November to Remember, an event they've done for the last couple of years in uh, Philadelphia at the ECW Arena or the Hilarious whatever it is now. Bingo Hall. Quote, and I quote, due to numerous circumstances, backing it up a little. That's a Seinfeld reference. Come on, buddy. Let's go. Due to numerous circumstances beyond our control, November to remember, the final chair shot has been postponed indefinitely. We're all just as disappointed by this as most of you are. Most of you are. <laughs> Some are like, cool. <laughs> we are remaining optimistic, however, and hope that all of you will do the same. Thank you for your continued support. No money. Well, well I'm sure there's <laughs> money that's been already paid in. According to the Atlanta Business Chronicle, Atlanta has made an official bid to host WrestleMania 27 in 2011. It's 2011, by the way. There's no end. That would happen at the Georgia Dome, which uh, obviously hosted the largest WCW crowd ever on a Nitro. And Atlanta trying to position themselves as a possible host city for the event every few years, four to six years or so. That's what they do when they rotate the Super Bowl. Mm -hmm. The Super Bowl is every four to six years. When does Dallas have it? In the Uh, Palace? Dallas in the Palace? Oh, the, the new stadium? I don't know if it's been officially done Pretty yet. sure there's a Super Bowl time. Um, you can always see it at the Superdome every four to six years. You always see it, you know, in the southern states, be it Florida, be it California, Arizona. That's where the last California is the southern state? It's the south. I mean, when they're it's having blue, the Super Bowl. So it's, it's not southern. <laughs> When they have the Super Bowl down at the Coliseum or, you know. Ring of Honor set an attendance record at a recent show in Boston, drawing a reported 900 fans. Congratulations go out to Ring of Honor for that. A big accomplishment for them. However, what is it, Brawl 5? Saturday, December Estimates 5th. have that at over 1,500, if not close to 2,000. I think it's Busting at the seams. It's going to be a big show this year. Really, really a big show. Let's go down to another new segment. Star of the Week. So Thank you. A discussion starter. <laughs> oh, I thought you were nominating me. 
You would be the first one voted off Survivor, I would think. No, I wouldn't. Do they vote off on Big Brother? You'd be the first one voted off on Big Brother. Do they vote off on American Idol? You'd be the first one voted <laughs> off on American Idol. Do they vote off Dancing with the Stars? You'd be the first one voted off Dancing Have with the Stars. Have you seen me dance? I'd rather not. Thumbs and the feet. And the feet. <laughs> I can All cut right. a rug. <laughs> Is that what that is up there? <laughs> it's real, folks. <laughs> yeah, it's damn real. Each week, I pick a star of the week, hopefully inciting the anger valves of these two. And uh, basically, it's first discussion. My doctor I don't said think I can't irritate the valves. I'm on the steroids. I don't think this week, though, it's going to be much controversy because the star of the week is Chris Jericho. In my opinion, Chris Jericho, we've talked greatness. Uh, we've talked about how great he is over the last few weeks. And I think this week, he really showed again, trying to trying to put over Al Sharpton in a very difficult situation this past Monday night on Raw. If you notice, every guest host has the most interaction with Chris Jericho. And, and Santino Morello. Well, and Santino, but in the beginning, it's always with Jericho to set the tone. Mm -hmm. Or in the middle. You know what? I'm going to have to put you over my knee, son. Jericho is the MVP. No Hands pun down. intended. Hands down. Not the Montel and Vontavia no. sport. No, he is the best thing, well not, not the best thing about Raw, but if they need, you know, the home run, it's Chris Jericho. So you're saying whether you like it or whether you don't, it's the best thing going. Absolutely. Remember when Nash did that at Royal Rumble 1996? No. Backstage promo, he said that, and somebody was laughing in the background when he said it, completely mocking Ric Flair. Look it was at probably that 95, line. by the way, because the NWO came in in 96. No, it was 96 from Fresno. Okay. Well, he was still working. Wait, no, it was 95. You are right. It I was know. 95. That's scary. That From the sun dome. Years. That freaks me out. I'm the guy that knows. I'm the guys that know. <laughs> I'm the guy that knows the lyrics, the theme songs. Yeah, that's even more scary. Because I hear voices in my head. Chris Jericho, yay or nay? And yay. Uh, Definitely. Again, MVP, no pun intended, of Raw and SmackDown, because Jericho's on each show. I mean, obviously, he's not going to belittle himself and show up on ECW. They really are the most consistent main characters on both shows. they got to keep room for Ziggler and The Miz. Uh, I'm, I'm sorry, Morrison on ECW. No, because they belong on SmackDown. Brands colliding. Maybe Abraham Washington is uh, tri branded No, no. There's no way that donkey show is making its way up to the A or B show. A-Wash. Uh, Chris Jericho, this week's Star of the Week from the Pro Wrestling Report. Ratings and reviews. Let's talk about Raw from this past Monday night. We've alluded to it several times so far here on this program. Al Sharpton was the GM, the guest host, rather. Raw scoring a 3.1 rating this week, down from its 3.4 rating last week. A lot of heat going into this show, gentlemen. A lot of people deciding not to watch because of their disagreements with Al Sharpton's views, whatever they may be. I'm not sure if his views are really articulated out there as opposed to what the perception of those views may be, justifiably so. Mm. Uh, but so obviously lost a lot of viewers compared to the week before. We had a big game on Monday night again from the National Football League, Dallas and the Giants, Giants. of New York. Um, and and uh, that was the Sunday what game, What are they going to do way. Monday? With that the was the Sunday they game. played Monday night. It's the Sunday game. They played Monday. Dallas, New York was the Sunday game. Indianapolis and Arizona was the Monday night game. He is that right? right? Yeah. Oh, I got my days off. I actually watched the Dallas game. Just to see the screens in the new stadium. But what are they going to do Monday with the Packers and the Vikings? Well, Ron, 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 not going to work here anymore is uh, the guest host. Who? Ben Roethlisberger. Ben Roethlisberger. You said Ron. I thought his name was Ron. Ron Roethlisberger? I don't follow football. You don't pay attention to anything. You're a broadcast journalist, and you don't even have the facts. For professional wrestling. I can't do it all. I don't cross all sports. And I've got to correct you on Royal Rumble dates. and wrestling. Those are the sports I cover. Wrestling's not a sport. Did you say cricket? No, I gave that up a couple years ago. Oh, okay. Um, Al Sharpton, your thoughts? Boring. Unbelievably best, not belonging on my product. Best Don King impersonation of all time. Living in America. At least they did explain that. Yes. Why yeah. didn't he tuck his shirt in? Is that the new look? It is the new look. You know what? For as horrible as it could have been, and as good as it potentially could have been, because he's a funny man. He wasn't allowed to be as comedic as he maybe was encouraged to be. He was under a Saturday short Night. leash. Absolutely. And I think they oversold the education uh, thing he was trying to push. But uh, I don't think it was a bad what else performance. He, what else plan. is he going to push? I'm a DVR watcher, and I hit the fast forward every time he was on. But the see, screen. that's not even giving it a chance. Yeah. 
You didn't watch when he was dancing with the Bella Twins? The Bella Twins aren't that hot. But they're not. They're still two chicks for you? Yeah, but I like the girls that I like. The Bella Twins don't do it for me. Alright. Sorry to hear that. Super Cena. Uh, the big matchup of the night was the gauntlet match. John Cena versus Big Show versus Chris Jericho versus Randy Orton. It started off promising. I loved how they booked it until the end. Yeah, because Jericho and Show beat the crap out of him. But it made well, sense. Well, John Cena, it made it absolutely 100% sense. Michael Cole handed him some spinach. I just thought, I mean, I... It only makes sense when Scott Hall is behind the curtain playing with the cage controls that the cage comes I was up fine with down. the cage coming down. I was fine with it. But why is Orton running from Cena who just got his tail kicked for the last 30 minutes, 20 minutes? Because the cage was coming down. But why Stop. is Orton scared Stop. of the cage? Orton's no. been this guy at, defends wait, but TNA. You were defending E to no end. I don't but, defend but no, no, no. And I don't defend TNA. Randy Orton has said John Cena has never been in a Hell in a Cell match. Right. So why would Randy Orton be afraid of the cell? John because be. he's never been in a heel. The heels always bail. You're generalizing the specific situation. Okay, did Legacy bail when DX came down to the ring? I don't recall. They did. Absolutely. The heels always bail. That's why he did it. But Wrestling if we're supposed to believe... Orton was terrified of if Cena. If we're supposed to believe any of this that's going on, Orton doesn't run. He backs into a corner, but he stays there and he flies. Well, if John Cena's not standing up, looking like nothing happened to him, of course he will, you know... Terrible. That, terrible. that was the part that killed Excuse it. Excuse me. <clears throat> oh, that was terrible. But I'm just saying, heels always bail. They're supposed DNA to. DNA Impact like last that. week gets a 1.0 rating, down from its 1.2 the week before, which was a big rise from its 0.9 the week prior. Uh, the lowest rated segment was Sting and AJ Styles. That's a problem. Yeah, that's your main event for Bound for Glory, and nobody cares. Absolutely. Mick Foley and uh, Abyss have a little bit of a thing going on at the end of the show. And, uh, See, that's the problem right there with the Sting AJ Styles thing. They're not booking it as the main. Remember when Jericho was champion the first time as the undisputed champion? He was always, How are they booking it? He was always the uh, 9 o'clock central. He was the end of the first hour. That's reserved event. for knockouts on TNA because it works. Okay. That was the end of the first hour. They were never the main, the end of the show, the top thing. Right now, the top thing was Mick Foley and Abyss. But, okay... I, I'm all for it. I like it. I like where it's going. If we get to get, if we can have a monsters ball between those two at Bound for Glory, worth every penny. I had no idea that a VHS tape was so violent. That's the point. I mean, he bled like, like a, a stuck, stuck pig. pig. <laughs> he was wearing and Foley cut his hand legit, by the way. What they that. call a crimson mask. I mean, it was a VHS tape, guys. This guy's been through barbed wire. He's been hit by. Why chairs, does he still have sinks. a VHS tape? And why well, didn't we ever get to see tape. the footage? Security tapes are all Where was the footage? GTV might have been available. GTV. I missed the, that, too. You know too. what? The best thing about Abyss is Lauren. And, uh... Michael Cole... Uh, Michael <laughs> Tanae? Michael Cole's not on... Oh, yeah, it is. There it is. Okay, never mind. Uh, SmackDown last week got a 1.9 rating down from its 2.0. I'm taxed. Just, I mean, we had some bad TV over the last week. Brutal. SmackDown continues to be the top show, though. But SmackDown this I week... I am SmackDown this week is going to have the return of Dave's favorite. Uh, excuse me. Before we talk about these things, this is a spoiler alert. Meaning we are going to oh, tell no, you no, something. No, 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 no. We are that airing on Friday. Happen. Are we not? Is Tonight. Today Friday? On SmackDown on In my the network UK, TV. They it's watch it on Thursdays. Anymore. On my used-to-be-a-network TV. Uh, on... Excuse me! Excuse me! Vicky Guerrero Excuse back. Excuse me! Who said Vicky was coming back? Who said it? Are you doing your Orlando Jordan? Who voice? said it? This guy. How does that make you feel? I, I think you Vicky's a great healer. Do you think... want to be right or do you want to be happy? Mm. I want to be right and happy. Mm, no, that's not the answer you had to choose from. Mm, indeed. Tick tock. This week's Cospective Tag Teams, specifically, I want to talk about DX. 
To me, there's two different D-axes, the one that was about 10, 11 years ago and the one of today. The one of 10, 11 years ago was for wrestlers. Today, it's two. There's a lot of you out there that think it's, it's uh, overdone, it, we've been there, done that. There's some of you that think it's cool. What does WWE think? They're looking at one thing, revenue. What's going to be in revenue? The glow sticks, the, uh, the shirts, the new marketing is out there. That's what makes this work. As far as me, what I like, none of it. I don't like DX anymore. It has been, it's been there, it's done. But more importantly, it was the four of them, the five of them 11 years ago. Today, it's a small faction, it's done. I don't like it, I hope it ends. Now, it's gonna be interesting what's gonna happen on Sunday if Legacy does get the win. I doubt that's going to happen. Will DX win it? Probably. But it's up to you to decide if DX continues. The marketing continues, you still buy those glow sticks and everything else, they're gonna to continue to run. If not, it'll be done. I hope it's done. And that's this week's Cospective. We'll see you next time. You're the host, man, let's go. Thank you, Kaz and the Cospector. Remember, you can send those emails to us at comments at bwrshow.com, and the Kaz will give you his take on what the hell's going on in the world. Uh, let's talk about in depth, folks. And uh, this week, submitted by Christian user, I'm sorry. Yeah, uh, <laughs> by, he's a religious by, guy. By Twitter user, Nat Dang Boo. Uh, I don't think so. he's Christian. Yeah. <laughs> Jason Rezzo, born November 30th, 1975. Uh, in Ontario, Canada, debuted in 1995, started with WWE in 1998, left WWE in October 2005, started in TNA in November 2005, returned to WWE in February 2009, has been around for a long time, and or a man as who we pioneered, say. about a minute, man who pioneered the TLC match along with his former tag team partner, Edge. Obviously, when he first came into WWE, part of the brood with Gangrel and... Uh, Best music of all time. Let's tell the Ryan Rogue story from recently where he said he was watching what episodes of what show with Gangrel when he was in town for a show? Oh, what was it? Buffy the Vampire Slayer. Buffy the Vampire Slayer. I'm not sure if he appreciated how funny that was. <laughs> he did say it was just weird. <laughs> but anyways, um, he has held many a titles. The NWA World Heavyweight Championship twice. It's been ECW t champion twice, uh, including current champion. European Hardcore Intercontinental three times. Light Heavyweight Championship, remember that, once. And he's been nine-time tag team champions with the likes of Edge, Lance Storm, and or Chris Jericho. And who beat him for the Light Heavyweight Championship? Talk to Gilbert. The Gilbert. man they call Gilbert. You still got those shirts? They're over, you know. They're awesome. Uh, no, The Miz is awesome. Christian, uh, you know, a great talent. Underrated, uh, especially for the risks he takes and the talent he has, not for the size he is. But Christian, a man who uh, made the decision to go to TNA Wrestling, made the decision to leave TNA Wrestling, and uh, really uh, has done, I think, the right things for his career at the right times. But some would say that that's probably not the case given his position in WWE right now, where many thought he would return and to the main event spotlight in one of the two main brands. He's in the best spot he could be right now in ECW. He's the top guy. Mm -hmm. I mean, if he's on SmackDown, he's going to be behind Batista, Ray, Punk, and Taker. If he's on Raw, he's behind DX, John Cena, and Randy Orton. Right now, he's number one in ECW. You had your thoughts. Damn, Dave took all my points. Because, you know, let me just add to it, again, what Dave said. The fact that, you know, everybody will say, he should go to Raw, he should go to SmackDown. Why wouldn't you want to be the top guy on the show? You're on TV every day. You're in the main event almost every day. Christian's doing what he wants to do. He eventually will end up on Raw or SmackDown. He eventually will get into the mix. That doesn't mean he'll have the title, but he'll get into the mix. See, Vince has this thing about not putting guys right back into the main event right away. Think about Goldberg when he came in. Granted, Goldberg got pushed, but Goldberg was pissed on his last six months that he was in there. Think about Booker T. Think, think about so? Yeah. Unfortunately, we do have to leave it on that note. We are out of time. And uh, remember, Tuesday night, 8 p.m. Central Standard Time. We're out of time. The, the Cal is, uh, I'm not cutting you off, Cal is. Uh, Tuesday night, 8 p.m. Central Standard Time. The Pro Wrestling Report returns to 540 ESPN, streaming live at pwrshow.com. For the man they call Meathead, for Dave Hero and the Kaz, this is Damian Nelson saying <laughs> thanks for tuning in to this week's edition of PWR Prime Time.